example for this YouTube video is going to be um, one that's a little bit more advanced, the square root of x minus 1. Now this is different than trying to find the derivative of, of a polynomial because the canceling is going to be a little bit more uh, advanced. And let's get into finding the derivative of this radical expression, a radical uh, function. To do that you can use the limit formula. The limit is h approaches 0. And you're going to follow the formula. Replace x with x plus h. Subtract away the original. You don't need parentheses around here because that radical is grouping that x minus 1 already. So it would be unnecessary to put the parentheses there. But you could if you really wanted to decorate this thing. But not necessary. There's still the h underneath. Let's talk a little bit about that h underneath. You cannot let the limit approach 0 because if you did, you'd get an undefined situation here. So just, in the previous, just like the previous example, this limit's going to have to wait until other things happen in the, in the question. And what we're hoping to see is some canceling. Trouble is, if we're trying to cancel here, you just can't simply cross out the x and the minus 1 and and you can't just cancel uh, in the radicals like that because we've got to follow the order of operations and those radicals represent exponents to the half power. So they must be taken care of first before any subtraction gets, gets utilized. So in a question like this, we've got a bit of a, a stumper. We've got to actually figure out how to get rid of these radicals. And one trick that we can use to get rid of radicals, you've used it before, is um, by multiplying by a conjugate pair. So let's talk about conjugate pairs for a second. A conjugate pair is a binomial that can get rid of radicals that appear in another binomial. So for a very simple example, if we have the square root of a, let's say, plus the square root of b, and we wanted to find a mathematical way to lift off those radicals, we could utilize uh, this conjugate pair idea conjugate pair is the same expression except with a different sign. When you multiply those two binomials together, say goodbye to the radicals. Because radical a times radical a is radical a squared, which is just a. If you use the FOIL method and keep on going, you get radical a times negative radical b, which is negative radical ab. Huh. I don't see the radicals disappearing. Hmm. Well, here it is. When you multiply those two guys together, the inner two, you get square root of a times the square root of b, which is positive the square root of a and b together. And look, those are exactly the same, so those are going to cancel away. The last thing we got to do is multiply the last two together. Radical b times negative radical b is negative radical b squared which becomes just negative b. So that's a way to get rid of radicals is by multiplying by the conjugate pair. And we're going to apply that same principle to this example here. So on the top of that fraction, you can multiply that by its conjugate pair, which would be the same expression but with a plus in between both parts. So it's the same thing except the sign is different in the middle. Whatever we do to the top of a fraction, we're going to have to do to the bottom of a fraction. So we're going to have to multiply the bottom by x plus h minus 1, the square root of it, plus the square root of x minus 1. On the top, we're going to use the FOIL method. On the bottom, we're going to distribute the h. Let's look at the top first. Radical x plus h minus 1 times another radical x plus h minus 1. The good news here is when we multiply those together, the radicals will disappear. And all we're going to be left with is just 
x plus h minus 1. The radicals disappear. Because radical something times radical the same something is radical that something squared, which brings you back to just that something. So, for example, radical 2 times radical 2 is radical 4, which is equal to what? Radical 2. Uh, radical y times radical y is equal to radical y squared, which is, just, which is just y. So whatever's in that radical, the radicand, just comes right out. If you multiply the outers together, you get a bit of a mess. You get positive radical x plus h minus 1 times radical x minus 1. When you multiply the inners together, this mass will disappear because you'll get a negative radical x plus h minus 1 times radical x minus 1. Just like in the previous example that I showed here with the conjugate pairs, we've got positive something and a minus of the same something. Those are going to eliminate each other. So the O and the I in the FOIL method will cancel out when you multiply by a conjugate pair. The last thing to do is multiply the last two together. Negative radical x minus 1 times positive radical x minus 1 turns out to be negative because a negative times a positive is negative. And the square root of something times the square root of the same something is equal to just that something. So the top of the fraction looks like this. And that's good news, because now the top of the fraction will change into just, if you distribute the negative through, these will cancel, the negatives will cancel. It turns out to just be h. Wow. We really did get rid of a lot of stuff on the top. But we're paying the price for it underneath. Underneath, we've got still a mess left behind. h times all of this stuff here. So h times all of this looks like a big headache. It looks like we haven't changed anything. It looks like we've made the question just more complicated on the bottom versus being more complicated on the top. But actually a very sweet thing has happened. If you take a good look at what we've got left behind, we've got H's that can cancel. When those H's cancel, it leaves us with 1 on the top. H divided by H is 1. And now we can apply that limit. Remember, the limit is still hanging out waiting to do its thing. Now we can let h approach 0. If we did, this little h here turns into a 0. And what you're left with is 1 over the square root of x minus 1 plus another square root of x minus 1. You could leave your answer like that. It's correct. You could take it one step further. You get radical something plus another radical of the same thing. You bring those together as two radical x minus 1s. Well, I hope that helped, and there'll be more math videos coming soon, so stay tuned.